What is up, guys? Pie Muffin here, and we are back with our SAO Rising Steel video. And it's been a little bit since uh, some S. I mean, it really hasn't been that long because what I did my ranking event video, you know, pretty much over the weekend, which uh, did not go back in on that. You know, I'm still sitting at you know like what 2.7, uh, which isn't that bad. You know, I'm still in like 12th place. Um, and then, of course, as you can see by my background, I have farmed up uh, the free background, uh, which is pretty nice, as well as finishing all the ordinal stuff. So I've been pretty lazy on SAO for the last week or so. But um, there was a data download right before it hit 2 a.m., which is the usual reset time when news gets added to the game. So I am assuming, doing this long and drawn-out intro, that the next banner and event info will be in here. Um, it's kind of fun sometimes to not actually know, uh, when I open the game, what to expect. Um, but I think we can safely say, because we haven't gotten a second event to go with the Earth unit, so I think this is going to be a case where we end up with four, uh, Earth units for this set. You know, we get seven, then we get our dual banner, and then we're going to get one more unit. So, I guess let's just hop... I don't really know who to expect. Um, I really don't think they're going to do... If they do... And I mentioned this, there is the possibility that we do get a third Unital Ring banner uh, before all this ends, but I don't think it'll happen right now. Um, the only reason I'm saying that is, with this background right here, if you pay attention, we got Alice, you know, right here, and then we just got Leafa and Sinon. So the only units on these two book covers, these are, by the way, the light novel covers, is we didn't get this Kirito, or this one, either one, it doesn't matter, they're pretty much the same. And we didn't get an Asuna. Now this Asuna, it doesn't look any different really, but they could still give us an excuse to give us a Kirito and Asuna banner. So since that is a possibility for a part three banner, I'm gonna guess that tonight's reveal is not going to be a Kirito or Asuna. Um, I don't even really know, like Liz, Liz and Silica are overdue for one. Um, I'm ruling out Kirito Asuna, Iskan Sheta, and Roni and Tis because I think they are going to be the three banners for the 1.5 year anniversary. So, I don't know. I'd say Liz and Silica are overdue, but let's just go ahead and take a look, assuming there is e even anything here. Dual Fists. Okay, well, that's definitely, uh... Okay, so we are getting an Iskan. So, I was completely wrong. Okay. Um, Earth Iskon, Dual Fist Iskon. Um, okay, so he's an enhanced... Finally, uh, you know, besides Kirito, what was the last male character that we actually got? It was probably, like, Anniversary Yu-Gi-Oh! back in November. Um, so this is very cool. I'm pretty happy with getting another Iskon. The only other thing I might have expected is, like, maybe they decide to throw another Integrity Knight Yu-Gi-Oh! at us, give us, like, an Earth one. But, um... We are getting the one-eyed Iskan, so it's like later in the war type. I assume it's the later in the war version of him. Um, yeah, probably. Now here's obviously going to be the downside. He is a fist character, which means um, there's only other two other weapons currently in the game. You know, there's the free-to-play three-star that we got on the first Fire Iskans event, and then there's the free four-star fist weapon, which if you didn't sell it. Um, you should still have because they gave it out for free. I don't know if they're going to be as generous this time around. I don't know if they're going to give us another free, um, uh, fist weapon for him. I'm not going to bank on it, but it would be nice of them considering fists. He's the only character in SAO that punches. Uh, so unless we get like a Kirito, uh, uh, alternate where he fights with his fists, like Iskan's going to be the only fist fighter. Um, but let's take a look real quick and see if they say anything about it. So when does this banner drop, for one? Uh, I'm not gonna be summoning, by the way. I've already stated, unless they drop, like, a Klein or something, I'm saving till the 1.5 anniversary. Um, so Iskan is a big skip for me. I'll get him sometime later. Um, his banner drops on the 8th, so, yep, it drops tomorrow. Um... Anything... I'm just, I'm just wanting to see if there's anything about his weapon. Um, I don't think we'll find out till tomorrow. It's probably not going to be in the news. 
Um, let's take a look at the new cutoff point before we get into what he does. Uh, okay, so Yuna is the new cutoff point. So they added uh, Cross Slash Kirito, um, Love is a Labyrinth, Asuna, and Yuna, which are all the, I believe, the non-elemental units. Um, so pretty cool there. All right, enough of that. Let's take a look at what he does. His partner is Kirito. So uh, you're going to want to be running him with uh, Earth Kirito, which is just the anniversary one. Uh, so hopefully most people have him by now if you're going to summon for Iskon. I, I do recommend just, you know, if you don't need stuff, if you're just looking, you know... If, you, if your account is anywhere similar to mine, where you've got two or three active link units for every color, uh, just save. Save for the 1.5, because we're probably going to get at least those three banners that I mentioned. Um, I don't know if we'll get Iscon now, because we're getting one now, but it is also going to be like a month and a half away, so they could definitely double up on Iscons. Um, but I still say the, the 1.5 anniversary units are probably going to be much better than a lot of the filler we're going to get here, especially if you summoned for... Uh, seven, and then if you summoned on this last limited banner, you really don't need the Syscon. Let's look at his stats in comparison. Um, okay, 6480 is good HP. 2350 is good attack. Um, his magic defense is very, very low uh, compared to normal stuff, but he's got very high defense. So, I mean, he's a, he's a solid unit. Uh, he's got, you know, and that's kind of going to be his thing is building up attack. You can see it. It's He's exactly like... The, the first Iskon we got, the fire one, where he increases his own attack. But uh, let's look at all his stuff. So, break, raises on attack by 7%, maximum to 30% for two turns, and blunt attack strong on single enemy. Um, so he raises attack before he does the attack. Incarnate break, 50%. Impact strike, raises on attack by 7% as well um, for two turns. And blunt extra strong on single enemy. Uh, and then... He's got Enhanced Mode, Fighting Vigor, which his Enhanced Mode does give Recollection View a plus one just by going into Enhanced Mode, which is pretty nice. Um, and I, I'm not, you know, judging him yet because we know we have to look over his Enhanced Mode details. Uh, Gaia Impact is his Incarnate. Incarnate Blunt Attack on Single Enemy. Damage increases 30% when the enemy's Incarnate is 150% or more. So you want to use that at the beginning of like a ranking uh, type thing. Damage increases 20% when recollection feels step 3 or more. So you can, if both those conditions are met, if your enemy has the incarnate built up and um, you have recollection 3 or more, you're getting an extra 50% damage. So he's a really good unit. Like, I'm not going to say he's not a good unit, but I just feel like if you've pulled, you know, Kirito or Asuna during the anniversary who were Earth units, if you pulled Rain during the Earth anniversary who's an Earth unit, or if you pulled any of these three you know, especially if you've pulled multiple, if you've got four or five Earth Active Link units, you're probably going to want to save for your other colors. Because uh, this Iskon is definitely going to help a decent amount, I would say, in the ranking event if you want to use him a couple times. But he doesn't do anything to lower Incarnate, so you're still going to run into that same issue. So unless you're going to be replacing one of your heavy hitters with this Iskon, it's really not even worth it to summon. He's a great unit. It's nice that Iskon's getting in our variant, but this definitely feels like a character you can just wait uh, until you pull him off of a random ticket, you know, six months down the line. Um, or one of these free summons that they give us, you know, at all times. Um, okay, let's look at his enhance mode details real quick, and then we'll go ahead and look at the event that's coming with him. So his break uh, just goes up to 75%, uh, and it goes to extra strong instead of just being strong. Um, his extra, his impact strike, his assault was already extra strong, so it's a little bit stronger than that. So that's pretty much the same. And then, yep, his incarnate's the same, it's just stronger. Um, so that's pretty much it. And then his Imaginarium decreases required MP by 2.5% when there is a water elemental enemy, which is very useful for uh, active link units. And since he is going to be a normal unit, I assume, um... I don't think there's any reason why he would be a limited unit because, you know, we just had a limited banner. Um, you'll be able to grab his Imaginarium. You know, obviously, they've been giving a lot of these free Imaginarium exchanges for, through all these events. So you, if you haven't summoned for a while uh, and you want to summon for Iskon, you'd be able to exchange 
uh, right away. I do love the detail of it being with his, like, bloodied eye. You know, when he basically had to rip his own eye out and crush it. Um, all right, so now we have a story event. So, obviously, not another ranking uh, right off the bat. Now it really makes sense that we got a Shata to go with uh, this Iscon. Like, a lot of people were saying, they were saying that, uh, especially since she is the first active link unit, uh, like, free-to-play unit, um, it makes sense that she's going to uh, work well with this Iscon. Um, since that'll most likely be what she, uh, does. Um, what do we got? What do we got in terms of materials? It looks like there's a mace, uh, for us to level up, which, uh, not really gonna work for any of these characters. So, if you haven't farmed up the old, uh, weapon for Iskon from the old event, and you can even see it in her, in the corner of her art, her 100% art, you can see Iskon in the picture. Um... If you don't have either of these fist weapons and they don't give us one tomorrow, this Iskon is also not going to be as useful. But it is, it would be smart if this is their plan. You know, they release this Iskon now and then during the 1.5, we get another Iskon and Shaita banner. Because then that's three fist weapons and that gives you a little bit more to kind of work with. And I would really love if they add a free-to-play um, fist weapon. It doesn't matter what color, whatever. Uh, to the free uh, legendary weapon exchange. I think that'd be a really smart thing to do. Um, so, obviously, Earth Event. Uh, you're going to want to use your Earth team, so you shouldn't be too bad. Fight Aqua Giant uh, all the way up to 120, so we'll definitely do a video on that. But uh, we're not going to be summoning for Iskon. Uh, definitely not. Uh, I'll pull him sometime down the line. I mean, I just look at my Earth team. Um, ignore Argo being there. I was using her for the bonus on this Unital Ring event. But, um, there's really nothing I would really want to replace. Besides this event, you know, I normally don't use, uh, Lenal, but I did, I had to for this event in order to survive. Hopefully that's not a recurring thing. But for the most part, my team, uh, tends to be, um, what do we, I usually have three breaks, so I, right now I just have Roni right there, so this is pretty much what I rock most of the time, you know, maybe I'll, if I'm doing a normal event, like we're, the one we're about to get, I'll probably replace Roni with, uh, Rain over here, so when I'm doing a whole bunch of charge stuff, I can do that, so as you can see, just right here, I have five active link units on this team, the only one who's not an active link is Asuna, but, uh, on my back row, Asuna. Um, but she can still link with Kirito on this team, so there's really uh, no issues there. So I pretty much have an active link whenever I want. Um, so besides replacing that last Asuna eventually, which I don't really want to because her healing, uh, you know, mermaid mode stuff is actually really, really good. Same thing with uh, Liz. I can use her as well. But uh, for a while, I'm, I just don't see a point, at least until like the two-year anniversary, you know, come this November... Uh, where I'll need another Earth unit on this team. You know, I pretty much have all my bases covered when it comes to Earth. And, uh, yeah, I guess I'll just uh, see what comes next. Now, there was one more thing I wanted to talk about. I didn't talk about it when the news for the new Ordinal came out. But we pretty much know that the next uh, Ordinal pair, or the next banner pairs, you know, probably starting next week, is going to be Wind. Which is a little dangerous for me. Uh, you can see here, this is usually how they do it. So, 416. So, pretty much a week from tomorrow. Or, like, a week from Saturday will be when the reset happens. So, we'll probably have a banner on the 15th or 16th that uh, is wind. Um, which, by then, I could definitely have enough to do five steps. But, I'm really going to try and hold off for the anniversary. But, wind is one of my weaker elements. So, I don't know if... It's really going to depend who the characters are and what they do. But uh, I, I am lacking a lot in the power department for Wind. Because, you know, Administrator's fine. Adis is fine. Uh, Recollection Field Asuna is fine. But then everyone else on here is at least six months old. So I really might need to just bite the bullet. You know, maybe, maybe save myself by a paid pack uh, for that. And then after that. Because besides Wind... Um, I'm pretty set on everything else. Non-elemental, I don't need anything. You know, yes, I could use some more power, but I've got 
what? I've got Kirito and Asuna active link. I've got I've got the healer. Well, actually, she does heal. Uh, I've got enhance mode, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Kirito. Uh, if I need to use them. And then I have the uh, Moon Cradle Tees. Or the Integrity Trainee Tees. So, uh, fine on that. Fire. Uh, totally set. I've got three active link units right there. Well, actually... Not in the front. I have yeah, I have three active link units, and then a lot of kind of powerhouses right here. Um, water, water, we're fine. We've got what? Uh, one, two. No, yeah, we've got two active links, but we've got a lot of newer kind of powerhouses, like uh, the Asuna down there, and then we've got the enhanced mode, uh, Adis and Alice, so we're fine there. Earth, we already taught Earth. We're set for life. Uh, light. I've got plenty. Nothing really I need to summon for here. And then same thing. Well, dark. Dark, I could probably still use some help. Uh, Yuki and Asuna are great. But between Leafa, Yuki, and Asuna, Yuki is the only real, like, powerhouse. So I could use some more damage on this team. So definitely save for a dark unit there. But, um... So I think for the most part, if I have to summon next week or the week after for a wind unit, I don't think it would kill me. Uh, if I let me actually see what's even in here in these, uh, do they have any good sales kind of going on right now? They'll probably have some more when the banner actually drops, but I may consider just buying like like these two right here. Just buy, you know, get myself another 500 gems uh, because I'll definitely be able to get those back before the end of the month. But we'll see. Anyways, that's gonna be it, guys. Let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, I guess people on the more casual side, you know, if you want to summon for Iskon, go for it because he's not, <laughs> as much as I hate it, you know, SAO gotcha games sell on the, on the female characters, um, and Kirito and Yu-Gi-Oh. So, you know, anytime there's a character like Iskon or like Fanat Fanatio not having a billion units, it just blows my mind considering, you know, how fan servicey they could totally make her. Um, but I guess she's not as popular of a character, so I guess that's why they haven't given us another four-star of her yet, but I'm sure it'll happen eventually. But yeah, so I, I would say I would not blame anybody if people are ISKCON fans and they just want a really, really good ISKCON, because this ISKCON is very, very good. Uh, he's not obviously limited unit good, but, uh, if you don't have any Earth units, like, let's say you've gone this whole time without an Earth Active Link unit... Or let's just say you just have this Kirito you see sitting right in front of you. And that's the only one you have. Then this Iskon is not a horrible choice. Especially considering that there are going to be other active links on his team. Or on his banner. You know, you've got Rain, Asuna, and Kirito here. So uh, if you did manage to get lucky. And then all these other unfeatureds are all units I just pretty much showed you that are all really solid too. But uh, his other featured uh, banner units are all very, very good. So I would not blame people for summoning. I just recommend saving for the 1.5 since they're most likely... I don't know if they'll be limited. I say there's a chance that they could be. Uh, moving forward, we might see anniversary units being more limited. But we'll have to see. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much my take on everything. That's going to be it, guys. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more if you're new to the channel. I'll see you all next time. Have a wonderful day, everyone.